Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone here to uh, the Allen Park Presbyterian Church as we uh, worship God from our sanctuary here at, uh, it's uh, August 2nd, so welcome to August. And I would like to thank uh, everyone that you'll see here uh, on camera and off camera. Um, it's an exciting day for us. We are in the process of upgrading our technology. And we don't have nearly all of it in yet, but we have, uh, we have a, a sound system. And for us, this is a big day because for the first time we have integrated sound between what you're hearing uh, on your device as you, as you join us in worship and also what people are hearing in the sanctuary. So if you look up over here, you'll see that there's a new speaker. Um, all the speakers that were circa 1970, 1980 uh, have been taken down. We've replaced them with these and we still maintain those. And I have to tell you that uh, everybody is just uh, so pleased with the sound output. It's crystal clear. No longer do you need to sit up front in order to hear. If you're in the back, you, you will hear just as well as there. So as I said, this is a Presbyterian church. We don't need to give people more reasons to sit in the back because that's where everybody tends to sit anyway. So that's, this is our tech upgrade and um, it is gonna come to, at a cost of somewhere between 40 and $45,000 and we encourage people if uh, you've been, in, if you've been uh, receiving something by um, tuning in uh, to our broadcast and there's a way that you would like to help financial donations to that would be very, very much appreciated. And they have been coming in. We have, we have over $20,000 towards that at this time, which is just fantastic and all praise and thanks go to God and also everyone uh, who has given them their time, their talent, their treasure. We have uh, with us today, you'll see that uh, our, uh, we have Christine el Haj, who is our accompanist who's here. Behind the scenes, we've got Matt Carlson and Mark Dimitrov. Uh, we also have here Andrea Carlson, Sue Ingersoll, and Richard Obert, who will be giving us our, doing our cantering here. And we have some very, very special uh, pre, uh, music by, uh, that, uh, with our bells that uh, Carolyn uh, Mangier is, and Christine did. So you'll see that in just a little bit. Now, we're also going to hear about Wakanda at home. We have our Camp Wakanda, and during the children's time, Ellie Klein will come up and we'll talk about that a little bit, so look forward to that in just, in just a few minutes. Um, and also, we have some wonderful, it's hard for me to say this without uh, choking up a little bit, we have some wonderful news. Sherry Keyes is in the hospital and after having suffered a heart attack and it's been a, it just, the 10 days has been really heart rendering because they've had her under sedation. And, just yesterday, she began to respond, and so thanks be to God. And we need to continue to pray for full recovery there. And uh, so, but we do give thanks to God for that. We're so happy uh, for the Keys family, but and uh, Joan Riggs and her husband. But also, um, what we found out is that she has so many friends, so many friends, and we're all praying for her. And we pray that uh, that her recovery will be swift and complete. So um, we do have a prayer list. There's people other than uh, Sherry that's on that. And if you'd like to get that, you can go to our website, www.allenparkpress.org. -E and from there, you will see links and you can join our constant contact email. And you actually have the choice of what emails you would like to get. If not, uh, you can get them all. Or if you would just like to receive the prayer list, you can check that box. And that way, when it goes out, um, uh, on a weekly basis, you'll get that. We don't do a lot of the announcements here because this is uh, on our public Facebook page, and some of this we want to keep, um, you know, I don't want to say within the family, but we don't, uh, we want to respect people's uh, privacy. But, so, that, the, everything else that we do here, and we do so much online, this COVID has really pushed us and pulled us into a, a technological spot that we've never been in before, but we do have at 9 a.m. on Monday through Friday, um, we have uh, daily devotions. They run about 25 minutes or so. Um, and we have a good number of people that start their day off with that. Everything that we do is recorded and then put up onto our, our YouTube channel if you search for that. So it's not only, it'll be the daily devotions that will be there and also the services, the sermons that you, that you hear uh, are also available. A lot of people, 
we're finding out, um, um, use it to time phase. So if they are not available or maybe 10 o'clock on Sunday morning isn't the most convenient time for them. So we have a number of people that are able to participate in the worship of God, but they come on and, and they watch it at a later time. So that is, uh, if there's anything good about COVID, we'll find out that there's lots of different ways that we can reach out and provide God's word to people, and we're very thankful for that. All right. So uh, you will see, if you're on our Facebook Live page, you will see that the comments are there. We encourage people to interact throughout that. And uh, our own Carrie Van, our communications director, uh, is usually putting in links and things like that. And so we're, thank we're thankful for that. So as we get ready to worship on this day, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you're a life-changing God, and you have touched us and transformed us to reach out to all who hunger for what only you can give. Pray that you will keep our feet in your path and bless us to multiply blessings to others, and that we do this through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Friends, as we prepare to worship, I encourage you to sit back, take a deep cleansing breath, and listen to our prelude. Amen. Thank you, Christine. Friends, as we come together here, we not only come for ourselves, but we give thanks and glory to God when we worship him. So I would encourage you to join me in our call to worship. All who hunger gather gladly. We come to feast on the life-giving word. Here, love abounds and grace overflows. Here, blessings multiply as gifts are shared. Come, let us pour ourselves out in prayer and praise and open ourselves to renewal and rest. Let us worship God. Friends, our first hymn will be, Hear, O Lord, my plea, and we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Justice, pleasure to my heart. 
my mortal tongue speak wisdom, righteousness be my desire. In its wakes and vindication, to his darkness show your Friends, in our Reformed tradition of which the Presbyterian Church is one, we all feel and believe that we fall short of the glory of God to be fully, uh, use all of our gifts to be what God has intended for us. But we're humans, we're frail, and sometimes we make poor decisions. But that's where the grace of God just rolls into our lives, showering us with love when we don't deserve it. But friends, when the Holy Spirit is present within us, we can strive to be more Christ-like in the things that we do. And that begins with a repentant heart. So we have a, what we call our prayer of confession. It's really confessing our weaknesses. It's asking God into our lives. So let us confess our sins in the presence of the one who blesses us and meets us in our needs. Would you join me for our prayer of confession, please? God of compassion, we are sick. We have wrestled all night with worry instead of resting in you. We have asserted our own goodness instead of awakening to yours. We have turned away those hungry for your help instead of trusting you and feeding them from your limited supply of blessings. Forgive us, heal us, and help us to hold on to you. We call upon you for you will answer us, O oh God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And friends, now in the silence of our own hearts, let us confess our own transgressions and sins. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the God of steadfast love is our refuge and our savior. In Christ, we who are broken are healed, forgiven, filled and transformed. So friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia, amen. And now is our tradition that uh, we would normally rotate around the sanctuary with everybody. We can't do that now, uh, but uh, we do, uh, please, virtually, give each other the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. All right, I'm gonna ask uh, Ellie Klein to come up for our children's time. And I'm gonna join her down here at a safe distance. All right. Wouldn't be a like tech worship service without this, right? That's like right. one moment of this is kind of how it's supposed to be. You're on now and I don't think I'm on yet. One, two, one, two. I'm gonna, um, so this is our new. <laughs> is it good now? No, uh, still not on, there it is. Oh, okay, there good. you go. So we have our new tech. Yes, exactly. And it would never, you're right, it wouldn't be complete unless we figured out what was going on. Exactly, exactly. So Ellie, I wanna thank you for being here today because yeah. you got something very exciting that you wanna tell us about. Yeah. And I am new here, and so I haven't been to Camp Wakanda, but I've heard how special a place it is. Yes. And I've heard it described as it's a thin place. Yeah. So you just feel a little closer to God and you see God, the manifestation of God a little bit more at Camp Wakanda. Yes. And because of COVID, mm -hmm. we can't be there this year. We'd normally right. be in, right in the midst of a big camping season. Mm -hmm. And since it's such tradition and there's so many people in the church and outside mm -hmm. of the church that are there, we said we can't just go a summer without. Right. Can you tell me what you've done? Yeah, 
absolutely. So what we're going to be doing this summer is bringing the love and the joy and the learning of Camp Wakanda home. And we know that we're never going to be able to replicate the space in its entirety. So if you're someone who hasn't gone yet, I have no more advice than just to say, there is a time, right? We're going to go back at some point. The world will return to normal. Mm -hmm. But this week, starting on Monday, so August 3rd to August 7th, we're going to do a week of camp at home. We're going to try and bring it back, bring the joy and the love. Uh, so every day we'll have two what we're calling our community activities, so our two pen pull events. One in the morning will be our morning watch, which is if you were at a Camp Wakanda in the past, you know that's where we start our day in prayer. So uh, some of the alumni from Camp Wakanda who have moved on to spiritual leadership will be uh, leading those every morning. Uh, so reading a story and really grounding ourselves in uh, the worship of that week. And then the afternoon activity, our 6 p.m. activity, will be uh, some of that fun that you hear about, some of that joy, whether it's doing a craft, maybe an ice cream run, playing a game, um, all trying to build that community uh, for campers of all ages to really tell the story of Camp Wakanda um, in a new and kind of fun way. Oh, that sounds really neat. And yeah. so, and then they have morning watch and evening watch. Yes. So it's at 9 a.m.? 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. And how, uh, would, how would people access that? Yes, great question. So we have a website, uh, wakandasummer2020.weebly.com. But you can also come and check out the Camp Wakanda Facebook page. Uh, we have been posting on there pretty regularly already. It's got that website. So if you haven't signed up yet, please do. This is uh, Camp Wakanda First. It's totally free. Yeah. So really just come and hang out with us. Uh, but they're also on that website and on the Facebook page is a place to get that Camp Wakanda t-shirt we know and love. You have to collect them, right? Like I refuse to have a hole in my Camp Wakanda t-shirt series. So we've got you covered there as well. Um, but really check in every day. Yeah. But also that website is gonna be huge because we have those two tent pole activities, right? Uh, but if you're somebody who wants the love of Camp Wakanda and you wanna do the whole thing, right? You wanna start with us at 7 a.m. with the runners, that's not my gig, but if it's yours, you're welcome <laughs> too. And you wanna end at a campfire on that website, we will yeah. give you a day in the life. So if you wanna run a whole camp, if you wanna do the whole thing, uh, nap time included, which is the best part, um, Check out that website and right. also keep checking back in because every day we'll drop little uh, pieces from some of your favorite alumni, bringing some of that fun in, doing a fun dance, singing a silly song, really enjoying that camp. So there's happen. energizers and everything. Oh yeah. So now the other thing is that um, what and what I'm really excited about mm -hmm. is the fact that um, we're going to cross post yes. all of these things. So if you if you if you say I don't know how to get to that Camp Wakanda Facebook page. It'll be cross-posted onto our to, onto the church page. Exactly. And then also, uh, we'll see if we can't get links into the into the church website also. Oh, perfect. So that'll be great. And you mentioned the T-shirts. Mm -hmm. But now, for a limited time, we hope, in a limited time only, you can also get a Camp Wakanda face mask. It's true. So if you want to rock your Camp Wakanda swag on your face all the time, we've yeah. got you covered there as well. Um, it's the same yeah. form as the T-shirt form. Uh, just go ahead and jump in there and order your own. I haven't seen them yet, but I've been told that they look really cool. I hope, well, and hopefully we don't need to use them for too <laughs> exactly, much Exactly, right. We'll have a Campbell Conda mask burning party at the end of all <laughs> right. of this. So this is a really creative thing that you've done. <laughs> you know, and I think that all things that are creative are, are, are born in, out of God. Mm -hmm. And so you've, but you've been working with s several other people. Yeah. And I mean at the expense of maybe forgetting somebody, but could you just, could you, so we could celebrate them, could you just tell us some of the people that have really been critical yeah. and crucial to this? Absolutely. So it, we have really been working with um, the leaders of Camp Wakanda. So if the world were normal, I would be your fifth and sixth grade camp director. Yeah. Um, and I have worked very closely with uh, Carrie O'Reilly and Denise Church, uh, my mother, Marie yeah. Klein, J.R. Whiteford, who would have been uh, one of your directors as well, one of our new directors, which yeah. is very exciting. Uh, but then also some of uh, the staff that you've come to know and love. Uh, the Starks, Jordan and Maddie. Um, Matt Carlson's gonna come help us out. Oh, that's uh, Sam awesome. Martin, Emma Olette, a lot of these very exciting people. Um, and there are absolutely people that I missed and I am yeah. so sorry and I'm so grateful for you. Yeah. Uh, but we've got a cool team this year, so I'm very yeah. excited. And just one, I have one other question. So these are actually going to be uh, done through YouTube videos? Mm -hmm. So if somebody can't be on at 9 a.m. or at 6 p.m., yes. you can always go back and you can catch it on your own time. Exactly. Camp on your own time. Do whatever yeah. works for you. And those will live forever. So if you want to do camp three weeks from now, two years from now, by all means, go for oh, it. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here yes, and tell us you. about it. I hope the kids are all going to participate in mm -hmm. it. And let, let's, 
I'd like to just offer a prayer before we go. All right. Heavenly Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to reach out to people in this unique camping ministry. And although we are concerned, of course, about COVID and and, uh, all of the, the effects that it has on people, we know that it's not the safest thing to be up there and to do that. So, Lord, you've also given us this technology and this wonderful group of people. So as Camp Wakanda at Home kicks off this week, we just ask that you would be present, you would witness to the praise and the glory that we give to you through all of these activities. And we ask this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. So friends, as we gather here today, let us prepare to hear God's word for us. Would you please pray with me? All-knowing God, you have satisfied our hunger at sunset and held us close through nights of wrestling. Now let the day break with your blessing. Awaken and illumine us by your word that we may behold your likeness. Amen. Friends, our first scripture reading today is Psalm 17, and we're going to read verses 1 through 7 and finish up with verse 15. It is a prayer of David. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From you let my vindication come. Let your eyes see the right. If you try my heart, if you visit me by night, if you test me, you will find no wickedness in me. My mouth does not transgress. As for what others do, by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent. My steps have held fast to your pass. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my words. Wondrously show me your steadfast love, O Savior of those who seek refuge from your adversaries at your right hand. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied beholding your likeness. This is the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. And friends, we have some very, very special music, Gabriel's Oboe. It's a handbell solo by Carolyn uh, Marin Jer and it's accompanied by Christina Hodge.
so beautiful. Friends, our gospel reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew. It's from chapter 14, it's verses 13 through 21. And just to offer you a little bit of context, uh, it kind of begins abruptly, but it speaks of Jesus and it is immediately following Jesus being told of the death of John the Baptist who, um, who was beheaded. Let's listen now for the word of the Lord. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. And when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. And this is the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. This is one of the two miracles that appears um, in all four of the gospel accounts. So not that uh, there is anything that's not true in the Bible, but when things uh, appear in all four, I always stand up and take listen because I think that the chances of them being uh, true, that they haven't been amplified or deflated over time, really comes through. And this is truly a miracle. And it's one that has been the object of discussion between Bible scholars uh, and theologians for uh, generations. What exactly does it mean? And the wonderful thing about this miracle is the fact that it feeds us as strongly as it fed, it says 5,000 men and women and children. So I will tell you, it wasn't just the feeding of the 5,000. If what was happening then is uh, similar to the churches that we see today, if they didn't count the men and women, well, guess what? It was probably closer to 15,000 than it was to five, all from five loaves and two fishes. Now, there's been a lot of discussion about this, and what they say was, well, actually, people had brought you know, enough food for themselves, what they thought was enough for themselves, and when they saw this, that they added to the, to the pot, and so therefore there was more than enough food, that there was 12 baskets full, that the food itself might not have just been multiplied miraculously. You know, whatever I guess you, whatever instructs you and gives you faith, then yes, you can understand that. I, I believe it's a miracle. I believe that it was multiplied. And it was multiplied by God because that's what the people needed. In fact, this whole story is about Jesus giving in his ministry to what people need. The title of this sermon is Always Willing. And that's one thing that we see about Jesus is that he's always willing to do what people need. He's a servant. I can tell you that he comes from an emotional spot here where he's heard of the death of his cousin, put to death by King Herod. Really on a whim, at the request of his daughter, he's beheaded. This is the John the Baptist who, when they were even babes in their mother's wombs, leapt with joy at meeting each other. This is the John the Baptist who prepares the way for the Lord. And when Jesus comes to the River Jordan and John says, I'm not even worthy of untying your sandals. You should be baptizing me. And Jesus says, no, this is required. And when he baptizes him, the sky is rent open 
and the Holy Spirit descends. And from that point on, Jesus' ministry take, take, uh, becomes much different. He goes forward and he heals people. He heals people of physical ailments. He heals people from emotional ailments. He grasps a hold of people who are on the outside limits of society, who have been shunned, and says, you are loved and you are worthy, and pulls them back in. But he loved his cousin. He had to be emotionally distraught. And so he wants to get off to a place by himself. He gets on a boat. He wants to go to a desolate, deserted place to spend time so he could process what is going on. But the crowd saw that he was in the boat. They knew that there was only so many places he could go and they were able to follow the boat. And when he arrived, they were there. And they had their own sets of problems that they wanted to be attended to. And Jesus looks and the passage tells us that he had compassion for them. That means that Jesus has taken the hurts and the needs of those people, and he's done more than just taking a recipe out of a book and saying an incantation and fixing things, but he's become empathetic to, empathetic to them, and he has taken on their hurts. He's taking on their needs. And he's ministering to it. Even though he is in the depths of emotional distraught, he stands up and he does what he's been put on the earth to do. And that is to make sure that everybody is, knows that they are whole in the eyes of God. So he does the things that are necessary but the hour is growing late, and the disciples who up until this point have really just been um, the body men for Jesus, right? Making sure that the things that he needs are taken care of, but it's Jesus himself that is doing all of the miracles, all of the healing, all of the preaching. And they say, you know, the hour is getting late, and these folks are going to get hungry. Why don't you dismiss them? You know, send them to town so that they can go get something to eat. And then Jesus looks at them and he says, you give them something to eat. We only have five loaves and two fishes. There's more than 5,000 people here. And he says, bring them to me. And then offering it, he, gives, he asks a blessing and then takes and breaks the bread and they distribute it and they find out that there's more than enough for everyone who was there and more. There's 12 baskets full of bread that come back. There's also 12 tribes of Israel and I think that's a significant thing that we should understand. That this is feeding the entire covenantal relationship of God with the people of Israel. Have you ever just been so bone weary, tired that you just didn't have anything to give anybody else? Did you ever, have you ever been in a spot where you're just saying, I am just emotionally spent? And all you really want to do is just go into your bed and cover up and spend some time there. I mean, we all get to spots like that. I think Jesus was in one of those spots. And then here's the teaching, is that Jesus buoys himself up and does God's work. And he's showing and he's telling the disciples for the first time, perhaps indirectly saying, you know, I'm not going to be with you always. And you coming and following me is a lot more than just preparing the way you need to take on the things that I'm doing. And you don't know it, but you can do it. So this is a miracle where the disciples participate. It's a leaning, it's a teaching for them. 
Friends, in just a little bit, we're going to have communion here. So I hope that you've all been able to bring, uh, to, to bring your own table that you might have uh, some sort of a bread product and, a, and a, some sort of a product of the, of the uh, fruit of the vine. And that virtually we're going to do this and it means so much, but this is really, this is the Lord's Supper that Jesus is giving here. And the purposes of it was physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing, and physical feeding of people. These are the four things that we need to do if we're going to have the abundant life that Jesus promises in, in the Gospel of John. That we need to attend to all four of those things. And this story tells us that God will help us attend to those things and then provide what we need. And friends, I can't think of a bigger time in my life that we really need nourishment in all four of those things. We're in the midst of a pandemic. We have concerns. We have people that are having a difficult time providing for their own families, providing for themselves, a concern about everybody's health, the knowledge that if some, if some people get sick, that their chances of survival are going to be really compromised. We don't know when our economy can open up. We don't know when we can get back together as a church. School is coming quickly, and we're concerned about how safe is it to send children back. And there's all these unanswered questions. And if you're a teacher, boy, God bless you, because when we pray, I'm, please take strength from our prayers today because this is going to be really difficult. And then we get these competing things. We're pulled in different directions. We're told about how important it is for children to have that experience. And, and also it serves a social purpose too because some, some kids are in abusive relationships. And it's at the school where those things can be identified and the safety of those students is at risk at this point. And we have a number of uh, the, the teachers who, th they themselves, if they are not in a high-risk group, they live with other people that are in a high-risk group. And what if they get contracted COVID? We know that kids tend to have, be asymptomatic, but they also can transmit. This is, this is so stress-inducing. And we know just through polling that anxiety and depression and fear has never been as high as it is right now. We don't have those answers, but we do have a way of dealing with them. And just as in our prayers when it says we wrestle at night, I don't know about you folks, but I've actually been dreaming of COVID. I'll wake up and I'll remember that I was I clearly in a situation of masking and, and I'm saying, oh man, this is really, this has become all, con all encompassing, all consuming. And then I pray because there's nothing that we can do other than to mask and to wash our hands and to practice social distancing that we can do to change it. I mean, we're in the midst of the summer. This is when people are getting together. We should be at Camp Wakanda. And the kids should be running around with dirty feet and swimming, singing songs. We can't do that. It seems like our freedoms have been restricted. But we do this because we care about the least of us. And that is the people who are most at risk. We do this because there's many people, many young people who probably, if they do, if they do get COVID, are gonna have minimal symptoms. But we know if you're over 50, 
if you're immune compromised, if you have a heart problem, that if you get it, the outcome is not, is not guaranteed. So this is when we get together here and celebrate communion. This is feeding our spiritual, our emotional, our physical needs. And there isn't a time that we needed it more. You see, we are, we are those people who had probably heard about John the Baptist, but still had needs of their own and wanted to touch Jesus so much to have those taken care of that they sought him out. And Jesus, the servant, in the midst of his distress, set his own needs aside and took care of everyone, and then demonstrated the fact that he doesn't need to be physically here with us, for us to declare the power of God in our own lives, and that the Holy Spirit is here with us, so that when we invoke the name of God, we also are claiming his power not for our own devices, for God's own glory. And friends, that's what a blessing is. When God gives us a blessing, it is a, it is a gifting of his power to a specific circumstance so that we can see and be transformed into people that we would never be without him. So in this difficult time, as we go forth, let's always remember Jesus was always willing, and if we're going to be more Christ-like in what we do, let us always be more willing so that we will step out of our comfort zones and go forward and be disciples. Amen. Friends, I welcome you to this table. We gather here today and we are participating in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. I hope you've had some time to prepare your own table and that you will participate here with us. But if you don't have access to those right now, please just continue to know that the, the blessings of God, that when we gather at this table, we gather with the, with the saints of all time that there's something very mysterious that happens at this table that we can't fully comprehend. Maybe we can only comprehend like an iceberg and only see what's sticking above the water and this massive amount of what happens at this table is hidden from view for us. We know that there'll be a time when we'll gain that understanding. But until then, we, by participating in this, we are declaring our belief and we're also declaring the power and the might of God in our lives. Just as Jesus gathered with people and, then, and had ministered to them, he also fed them. And that's exactly what we're doing around this table. And folks, we do this just as Jesus did. Jesus sat at the table in that upper room on a Passover and took a piece of unleavened bread and after giving a blessing and thanks, he took it and he broke it. And looking at his disciples, he said, this is my body, broken for you. Take, eat, and do this in remembrance of me. And then after the supper, in a similar manner, he took the cup. And he proclaimed that this cup is the new covenant, his blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. He told us that he, the next time that he participated and drank of this cup, he would be in the kingdom of heaven with his Father. Friends, when we take the bread and drink of the cup, we proclaim the saving death of Jesus Christ until he comes again. If you take your bread, know that this is a gift of God. Body of Christ broken for us.
the cup of the new covenant, Christ's blood shed for us. Friends, let us pray. Father in heaven, we gather here today in belief, and we hear the, the, uh, the story of the miracle that's contained in all four Gospels of how Jesus came in his distress and the loss of John the Baptist, but came here and then ministered to the people who were in need. And Lord, we are in need of ministering here. We find ourselves in situations that we can't comprehend that cause us dis-ease. We come to you with health concerns. We wonder how we can get through each and every day sometimes. But Lord, by coming here, we have a very physical manifestation of your grace and your intent that you will give us everything that we need. So Lord, we come here. We give you thanks. We do this in remembrance of Christ because he told us and warranted us to do it. But by being here, not only are we giving you glory, but you are feeding us. We thank you for this. And as we gather here, we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we'll now sing our second hymn. Amen. Thank you. Friends, when we pray, we are activating the Holy Spirit in our lives. Our prayers are expression of faith and belief. And that when we do so, we are opening our hearts and then the Holy Spirit fills that space. And through that Holy Spirit, we are given fruits aspects of our lives that can become all-encompassing, that allow us to be transformed into the image of Christ, that how we look at things and react to things are different than if God wasn't present and we lived our lives just feeling that we needed to do everything for ourselves. But God calls us into relationship with him and by doing so, into relationship with one another. And although 
Certainly, we are never called to do what Christ did. First, because of it would be uh, pretty narcissistic for us to think of that. But the other reason is, is nobody, we don't have to do that. Christ did it once and did it for us, and it is, that is forever. But we are called to be disciples. We are called to be the light of Christ in this world. And that means we need to open ourselves and to understand the most important thing we can do is to honor others and to be in relationship with one another. That we can take the empathy that Christ demonstrated by having compassion for the people who are in need. By providing empathy, we take other people's situations and we place ourselves in it. And from that, we gain an understanding that's deeper than anything we could ever do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather here today in honor of what you have done for us in Jesus Christ. But we also know that throughout the history of your creation that you have interacted with us, become manifest in different ways. But that you coming to earth in the form of Christ, that that's permanent that you've now given us the keys to the kingdom that we might live our lives fully aligned with your will. And if we do that, we need to look at the world and realize that there is a lot of hurt in the world. There's a lot of needs in the world. There's things that are happening that need to be changed. So we pray for the needs of the world, saying, O oh Lord, attend to our cry, give ear to our prayer. You are a God who hears us and holds us and helps us and that you are the eternal source of all blessings. You also provide. You're an endless source of provision, not only the physical things that we need, but the emotional and the spiritual. It is in your compassion that you see our need. You heal our sickness and satisfy our hunger. So hear us now as we pray for the church, your church, the world, and all in need. O oh Lord, attend to our cry, give ear to our prayer for our sisters and our brothers called by your name throughout the world. O oh Lord, attend to our cry, give ear to our prayers. Bless all who are gathered here today so that they may be in relationship with each other, in relationship with the world, that they will be a blessing, that our actions and our steps from this point forward will be in mission with you. We pray for healing. We pray for healing for all those uh, who are having disease, for who are ill. We know that you are the great physician and we lift up all those people. We pray for wisdom, not only for ourselves, but for the leaders of all nations, that they will be led to actions which relieve oppression, which honor liberties and freedoms, which honor you. We pray for those who are hungry, who are vulnerable, who are seeking refuge from adversaries and injustice. And Lord, we pray for the faithful, those who, those who have looked and witnessed to things in this world and instead of stepping away from you, have stepped boldly into, into you, into the, your Holy Spirit. Lord, they have preceded us, and in many ways, they've mentored us. They brought us closer to you, and, and Lord, will you just bless us so that we might be the same to our younger generations. O oh Lord, attend to our cry, give ear to our prayer. And then, Lord, at the end of the day, as we prepare to go, as we prepare to go to sleep, let us know that you can come to us in dreams and that we can wrestle with you there, but that wrestling is done out of love, that you are drawing us nearer to you, and many times that's into places that are scary for us to go. 
but you show us steadfast love, a wondrous steadfast love, that we may behold your face in righteousness and that we will find all satisfaction. There's nothing else in the world that we need other than what you provide. And that when we awake after a night of that rest, that we will see you, that we'll behold your likeness in many, many manifest different ways, that your kingdom will come closer to the earth because of what we do and how we act. And we pray all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, um, as this service draws to a close, we would welcome you. You'll see that there's ways that you can give to, our, to the church. If you are a member or affiliated with Allen Park Presbyterian Church, we encourage you to do that. There's a number of very safe and secure ways of doing that that you'll see uh, either electronically or sending a check. Thank you for the support of your ministry. And if you're joining us because your church isn't meeting right now, friends, you're under no obligation to provide any, uh, any financial stewardship for us, but we would like you to remember your own church to make sure that they are getting enough sustenances that they can get through this COVID crisis that, uh, that is affecting everyone. And then finally, uh, if you've enjoyed this service, it's fed you and you enjoyed the new technology, which will only get better, and you would like to give to that technology upgrade, please, we would welcome your gift too. Now, even though this service is finishing, you need not say goodbye. You can join us for our virtual coffee hour, which is done through Zoom, and uh, that information should have been sent to you if you are on our constant contact, um, and I think there's probably some information that will be on the screen right now. And again, the best way that you can stay involved and aware is to sign up for our constant contact emails, which you can do at our website, www.allenparkpress.org. Remember, all of our things that we do live on Facebook are then uh, recorded, and they're also posted on our YouTube channel. We have Bible studies. We have daily devotionals. We have these sermons. We have these full worship services. All are being done so that if you are feeling diseased in this time, we offer them to you so that you might feel closer to God. God bless you all. And as we go forth into this world, know that we go as disciples, but we walk not alone. We walk with each other, but also with the love of God, the peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Be blessed.